So this is all very informal. Um, so it, well, it's particularly an experiment today because I've never done it with um, Theo. But what I found out is that Theo also has boxes full of stuff in no particular order that you, you can't bear to throw away. You must find it the same, an, an article in a magazine or a photograph. Of course, you've got other sorts of boxes like this. Uh, however, obviously, you, I like, well, I like both really, but I, I mean, these always smell nicer. Papers, paper smells nicer and, and uh, it's nice to touch. So mine will go back way before Theo. They'll go back um, to but before most of you were born. And they're sort of traces. I always think that, you know, the work that you do, the work that like, you put up to create or goes into the um, projects of you or whatever, it's just a kind of residue of, uh, of loads and loads of work, loads of pictures. And stuff, and I'm from a generation that's very sort of image-based, uh, probably more than yours, I think. I mean, the AA at the moment is is very word-based. I think it's very fond of um, um, compl complicated um, explanations of things, but through words rather than through pictures. So, in the past, all I've done is picked something out. At random, so since this is the biggest thing, this this is very battered uh, um, copy of Shelter so magazine. You had um, and each group there are two main groups. So the, the sort of you might say the technologically driven group that loved uh, that that went to um, um, Cape Kennedy, which looked like this then to look at the rockets and then you had other people that went and were, wandered in the woods and uh, talked to rabbits and um, things like that. Do you, do you all know Sally by the way? Yes. Yeah, you should know Sally. She's uh, head of grants, aren't you? Yeah. Sally can get you money. If you want money, go to Sally. <laughs> She's got loads. So, so there's two uh, kind of quite different Projectors. I mean, they also had their, their own bands. If you went here, you, it was probably, um, what would it be, Janis Joplin or um, something like that. Or if, if you went here, it would be um, Pink Floyd or quite different sort of music. So it's, e it's easy to forget that, I think. Or you might say, was it worth remembering? I don't know. Anyway. So I suppose Minima Forms is neither it's sort of a combination of both, perhaps. But this was a very Im shelter was a very influ influential book. It showed you how to make. Uh, see, what well, people like Rota, they think that they think it's all new. They showed you how to build somewhere to live, uh, how to make a bucky dome out of old bits of bamboo, how to build earth walls. It was really. Uh, how to make a nourishing nightcap drink out of used sun boil, that sort of thing. Okay. So meanwhile, the other lot were uh, at, at Cape Kennedy. The, the nice thing about this was that um, in the 19, 1965, what were you doing in 1965? <laughs> and so, what were you doing in 1965? You, you not, not popular demand with all the white on my beard, but I wasn't around either. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I sort of wrote to Cape Kennedy and said, Cape, have you got any information you can give people, you know, about what you're doing? And I got back a month later, t three huge boxes like that, full of stuff. I couldn't believe it. Because normally those things you think are very secretive, aren't they? You know, so, so I, I was quite amazed. So I've got lots of things. I could never, see, I never know what's going to come out. But what I really liked were the drawings of robots. A lot of drawings for robots. How do you make a little hole on the moon? 
uh, with a robot that's controlled from Cape Kennedy. And you'd think the drawings were really technical, but they're really kind of rough, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, spaceships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, no. When we went, to the, we went there on on a trip because they offered to take us round. And the mock-up of the first capsule, it was made out of MDF and cardboard and stuff. It was, <laughs> so it was great. Not like all the sophistication that, that's here and the kind of drawings that you do. They were really, really rough and ready. Mm. Okay. Do you want to interrupt me? Uh, well, yeah. You're doing really good. Well, Frank Lloyd sure. Wright, you've all heard of Frank Lloyd Wright? Yeah. Italian. Who speaks Italian? I don't know what that says. Mm -hmm. One of my heroes. Did you have here? Who are your heroes? Who are everybody's heroes these days? Do you have them? Your, your generation without heroes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, oh, don't, no. Big I, think, I think everybody is here because of their hero is sitting in front of them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that. Uh, After 18 misguided. years here, uh, I'm, I'm, misguided. I'm, 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 I'm into straight misguided. talk. Uh, okay, why don't I share some photos? Yes. Too. Uh, I'm not like David, I don't try to archive things, but I've had to move a lot in the last three years, so. Sometimes some of the stuff sits in the studio and scares the hell out of me when I realize that my personal stuff is floating around everywhere. So I did open this box before I uh, came here and I took out this sketchbook, which is from my college days. And I found some photographs from one of my first jobs after the AA. And I found um, an exhibition that me and David worked on, which was in the spirit David, because it was the David Green exhibition at the AA that Brett Steele did, and uh, this was a photocopy of the document that David gave us as a brief where he invited three uh, people to kind of rethink some of the thoughts and things that he had done in his work, and uh, someone like Shina Goshira, who's a diploma tutor, was one of the people uh, looking at a project from Baghdad. And uh, for me, it was something called the Living Pod, which for many people, that's a project that David is quite well known for. But inside here, anyway, is basically how David was organizing the exhibition, with these three projects being an important part. And this was something that he did with Samantha Hardingham. And uh, these are some of the initial sketches that he did were photocopied, he has the original ones, but he doesn't like leaving, <laughs> like leaving his drawings, but this was kind of the blueprint of this is Shen, I was also a young fashion uh, student from Royal College uh, of Art named Rowan Mersch, who's gone on to become a quite well-known artist in his own right, and this kind of weird thing is David's uh, rendition of what I was speaking of, which was the high-rise pod versus the Theo. Stephen Minima forms things. And this was something for me that was amazingly meaningful. Uh, obviously, I respect David a lot. I can't say he's my hero, but I think he's my dearest colleague. And I think he's probably one of the few people that I feel uh, quite close to in this place, which is kind of strange because he's double my age. But I think he's the, probably the youngest at heart. So this was on the front members room when the school did exhibitions. And uh, realistically speaking, I think it was a really important thing, probably for David as well, to revisit some of these things, but to revisit projects that he was doing in the 60s, I think, with people that I think he also had a relationship with in the AA for very yeah. degrees, um, and to see what they thought about that stuff. And these are some of the drawings of the mosque that David had done. And the exhibition was, was really great. Uh, for me, what was probably the scariest moment was actually receiving the living pod model, the original one from the front, which kind of scared the crap out of me. Uh, because in some sense, then, that was sitting next to my revisit versions of what David was doing, and I think in some way, uh, yeah, it was an interesting time for me and Stephen, because we also had done this project called Memory Cloud a couple of months before on Trafalgar Square, so 
we were working a lot. We were totally exhausted. The school had just gotten a DPL, so they had a CNC machine that nobody knew how to use. And then I thought as a gift with Stephen that we would rebuild his high-rise pot. And I think that's now part of the Archigram archive floating around somewhere. But the original intention, uh, which is still incomplete, was that each of these pots would be given to architects that David knows or had some influence on, and that they would paint them. Because each of the ideas of this stuff was that that would be uh, customized. And then projects that I think even Sean is going to be working on with David, like Love, Bug, and and the rest. So anyway, this is an interesting document because David, I think, has an interesting way of sort of bringing that kind of material and his work in a kind of seamless thing. And for me, it's very different. Um, I think with my brother, it's kind of more a strange conversation about stuff which happens really sometimes quite remotely because uh, we live in two different cities for the most of the time. Um, but anyway, this was kind of important. Um, the mobile phone was also something that we were very curious about because that's what enabled us to do memory cloud. Yeah, what was the date of that? This was in 2008. Yes, and that was a state-of-the-art phone then, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is mm. from 2007. Yeah. And this, this is my post-AA uh, first day on the job uh, working for a guy named Peter Eisenman where I sort of entered the office as supposedly the kid that's got skills, uh, digital skills. And I worked uh, on a project in the city of culture uh, in Galicia for Peter Eisenman. And one of my first jobs was to basically do the set outlines for six buildings that were supposed to be part of this uh, pilgrimage site. Uh, and these were the first photographs that I got back. And uh, if you look at them, they're kind of like very strange because they look like a Jeep Wrangler ad for the Grand Canyon. You see how big these yeah. buildings oh. actually are. And in a very weird way, um, yeah, that was a little bit of my history. Well, who's the cowboy that sells Marlboro? Marlboro. Yeah. Marlboro ads? Yeah. <laughs> you get healthier if you smoke more. Yeah. <laughs> I think chocolate as well. Yeah. <laughs> Another weird healthy. stuff that I have in this box, uh, one of my students, um, one of them is actually coming back here next week, uh, Rob Stewart Smith, but his teammate uh, was a girl named Yota, and she was also an uh, indie rock star in Greece, uh, and an electronic artist who's been in like Red Bull Music Academy stuff, but she had a band called The Flakes, and I haven't really opened it, I listened to it. Okay. If we have the DVD drive, then I'll show you this thing, which has David Green uh, speaking about uh, his work. But the Freck Center is basically the, the place that owns the living pot. And it's also in English. And Marianne Breyer uh, basically interviewed David. And it's a yeah, nice, I, nice I David. don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you might see it in a little yes. while. So, so um, it's, it's but I, I actually don't archive things. It's somebody who did it was Cedric Price, and uh, he, he had a rubber stamp, and he would, every single thing he would stamp and put the date on. And I do recommend it to you, because it, the stuff, it, uh, you'll find it, when you look at it in retrospect, it tells you quite a lot about your work. I mean, I, you see, the adverts like this, um, everybody around the television set as a piece of furniture, it's quite witchy. Every, and I could make a project out of that now, you see, because that doesn't happen anymore, does it, you know? And so that you could, uh, if you ask, well, what are, are the, does that have any architectural consequences? I imagine clearly it does for when you're designing houses, and some of you do will be doing some housing in the, with, with I think, Charger does it, doesn't he here? And look, great car. But what I loved here is that architects often have to develop new words to describe what they're doing. Um, Buckminster Fuller was very good at that, wasn't it? And people like Solari. So they invent sort of words. Whirl, whirl away hydromatic drive. It's, a re it's really poetic, isn't it? And, and that's sort of the rocket here. I just think that's great. Get the idea. Yeah, I think I'd put one of the, if I was a, a student, no, I think just I'd put rockets in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. right. Obviously, Andy Warhol, really nice book.
I think that the next DRL end of year catalogue should be more like this actually with things to pop out. Mm -hmm. It'd be expensive. Rocket kind of. With a rocket <laughs> popping out, yeah. I think Excellent. this is a great book. Mm -hmm. It obviously is a huge influence on my generation. And then there's this was um Oh, you're yeah, trying to research question, trying to get some money. Mm -hmm. Arthur Graham actually never, got, it did get one grant from the Graham Foundation, but I think it was only because um, we knew somebody, somebody at the Graham yeah, Foundation. Well, the people get funding from the Graham Yes. <laughs> mm. This is uh, the prospectus for the Invisible University, sort of first try. But uh, the, this wasn't actually in the, the, the exhibition. What, what was nice for me is that three people, Theo, uh, Rowan, and Shin, sort of took an old project that was probably done before they were born and tried to re reinterpret it. And they worked really hard on it. I mean, Theo set up a whole, I haven't got any pictures here, I don't think, whole kind of workshop there of students churning out uh, was quite amazing. And Shen did a lot of things for it too. That's nice, yeah. isn't it? And the Warhol pop, mm. pop up. <laughs> oh dear. That, that was DRL. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was the book that he brought mm -hmm. so in Westminster. So yes. Before he started this thing, um, me and a colleague gave a lecture in Westminster that you came to mm. actually. That's the reason why we did this face breeder project, which mm -hmm. is one of the first projects that I did with, with Vasilis and, and with Stephen. And, uh, this event was, was part of that. Yes. My old name is still here. Yes. And this is the first meeting of his faculty at the university that included people like Usman Haq and Jason Bruges. We met in the park, didn't we? we? We did do some stuff in the park, yes. yes. Mm. In a really strange way, uh, this guy John Goodman was my external reviewer for my PhD right, yes. 20 years later. Kind of very weird, weird association. From visible university to actual university. <laughs> yeah, I got domesticated in the academia <laughs> after 10 years working with a guy named Ranoff Glanville. But, uh, yeah, and he does. Chris Leon, he's quite busy. Usman Hack, they do light shows and stuff, I think, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Mm. And, but this this is the book that he brought to sh because he was working on a catalog for this exhibition. And at one moment mm -hmm. in time, you brought this book, which I think is pretty cool. It is a cool <laughs> book, is isn't it? That is really no way to yeah, yeah. describe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what it it is extraordinary well. is you That's will find when you get old is what survives, and you will as you get old the things that survive. Um, Really peculiar. <laughs> mm. How this has survived, I don't know, because it must, I must have bought it. I don't know when it was published. Years and years and years ago. You know, when everything was silver. And somebody those, came up to me that and said, that oh, <laughs> mm. oh, we had a party that day and we lined everything with silver. <laughs> Who did? It wasn't one of you, was it? No. And I yes. thought, so, you know, yeah. where were you? Where have you been for the last 60 years? <laughs> someone last week or a week before. Old Archigram. I brought this one out before, one of my favourite. If you want to draw, this is, they'll have a copy in the library. It's beautiful drawings. A really interesting project, this one. No computer, drawn without a computer. Th this one, he went to night school. This is done in oils. Mm. And uh, he went to night school to learn how to use oil paint in order to do the drawing. He changed his technique all, all the time, which I think is quite, I get the impression, quite hard with a computer. People get stuck in particular programs. And then if, if you know, if, if you're using program A and then other students using this, the drawings become identical. Whereas in the, you know, old bloke in the past, right, you, you could tell who did a drawing. Uh, you always knew by the, you could recognize the, the weight of the line and all of that, which you can't do anymore. Well, maybe your generation can. And this is 
probably one of the most famous publications here. This is like Boyarsky mm. giving people an opportunity to actually cause their own chaos, I think, because my yes. club still works on some of these, if I'm not mistaken. He's st yes, he's still, still working he's, on those pieces. Yeah, yeah. He's still, he's got drawings that he's been working on. I, I remember when we worked together at Euston Station, he, he had to do the... They tell me to shut up when I get boring. Put a mill your life to come. He was given the column, big columns, and to design the waste bin and the light fitting that went on e each column. <laughs> this, they had one drawing which was on his desk for six months. You wouldn't get away with that now, would you? A pencil drawing, and it was so dirty. When he was erasing it, you know, it just left all these white marks. <laughs> And I think probably that, also yeah, one thing. Them, yeah, no, you couldn't get away with it. One, one thing that's probably important to also recognize is like this school had a really strong relationship with Cooper Union. And so if you look at who wrote on this catalog, is a guy named Levius Woods, who, if I'm honest, is also probably the other amazing draftsman and architectural genius of our yeah. drawing. So those kind of things are kind of lost in the conversation sometimes, but uh, Boyarsky and John Haydock, uh, yeah, super important people. My segue is in an exhibition. Does he have any influence on your generation anymore? Uh, Libis Woods? Libis Woods, yeah. Didn't see much of it in DRL. Mm. <laughs> You're looking at me. No, no, it's not the at students, all. No. The students. <laughs> There was a time, I mean, hugely influential. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's that one? This is a, it's not a catalog, I wish it was, but this is uh, the leaflet for an exhibition that me and my brother were in at the FRAC called Reparations, which still is probably one of the most interesting exhibitions that we were in. And our work was shown with people like Haydock and uh, an artist named uh, Kadar Atta, who was recently in South Bank, and uh, a lot of kind of radicals. We're always kind of lumped in with a lot of people that are a little bit older than us. Uh, Daniel Burnham, John Haydock. If you've gone to Paris, you probably have seen this installation, right? And uh, our work was actually sitting next to Haydock and Daniel Liebskind, and they were showing the, the Berlin city edge. And the work that they have of us is with an artist named Krzysztof Wojtyczko, but it also shows the work of Shuguruban for these kind of deployable housing, paper tube housing, and some other stuff. Bill and Hiller Becker, uh, kind of interesting things. This isn't as cool as that, obviously, but it was meaningful. Uh, it's just an old AA project. Yeah. Architectural Design AA Polyarch Bus Tour. Do you know what Polyarch is? It's something that was set up by Cedric uh, Price to try to bring schools of architecture together. And so one of the, te the, the things the AA did, they, did, they bought a London bus and then modified it with flaps coming out and there's something inside. And they drove around from architectural school to architectural school, probably telling them how wonderful service. they all were. <laughs> yeah. But to try to uh, set up a new kind of net network. How long did it go on for? Was it like sort of every day it was going on? No, no, it didn't last very long. <laughs> yes, very so I was no. looking here, but um, the hard work on the bus has taken its toll of the students. <laughs> In the bus group, there were 15 who had, uh, I'd expected to turn up on the bus, but only nine turned up. So th that's pretty much like today, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> what mm. were they trying to do? Were they, were they just trying to communicate with each other? Yeah, yes. I mean, you, 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 can't, I mean, you can't imagine a world without your phone. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, well, it, it's like to, to try to establish ne a new kind of network yeah. between schools of architecture. Mm. There's some interesting video of this again. stuff because it was it was built yeah. in Ching's yard. Yes, it was, and lifted and then out. They had to crane it out. Yeah, it's picture. That's <laughs> <laughs> picture. Yeah. Mm. So, oh, wow. think, so Sean should have craned his his um, yeah, lighthouse. lighthouse. Yeah. Sean could have yeah. craned some stuff. Must be a bigger journey getting here, but traveling down. Yeah, this is the first draft of a, a 
of the book Adaptive Ecologies that we did. And uh, this is the first publication that I did at the AA. Um, that has a lot of people, ex-DRL students, and it's obviously like based on a lot of the interests from metabolists and things like that. But not as cool as Michael Webb, but it has a lot of old, old guard people, new sensibilities of some of this stuff. Some of these people are teaching in the school today, so Kostas Grigoriadis was a student of mine, he's teaching, he used to teach a very But what popular. would be the main in influences you see on that? Yeah, I think, I think the metabolists yes. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We even had people like uh, Thomas Edison with the single poor concrete yeah. house. He was trying to print a house or cast a house in, in a day. And the teacher here, Mostafa, was working with his colleagues uh, doing a kind of tailored cast house. We tried to put our references in here so that people have an idea. Mm -hmm. and this was the first draft of that. Yeah, because I'm hoping. See this picture here. It should ought to. You you perhaps wondering where this is. In, yeah, you know whose garden that is, Prince. Yeah. Mm. Prince of Wales. He's got he's got a nice house. Oh, I want one. And a, and a gardener and a horse. <laughs> I'm hoping that that picture is in here. I thought I got it from here. Yeah. I, that's really nice though, isn't it, that wall? Oh, cool. Well, it should have been in here. Perhaps it's a piece of one of these. Yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was always interested in gardens, but how um, the place of when you're using a, a mobile phone in a garden, and you know, this, this could just be, this is sort of what I could say is a new kind of classroom, really. Mm -hmm. And this is what the bit of the Invisible University was about. So if this is Highgrove, I, I thought the photo was coming from here. Uh, and then I collaged in <coughs> an aeroplane and to try to make it more, more technical. You know, an idea that you could bring in temporary kind of things to, uh, to you sort of re repurpose the garden for different, for different projects, if you like. Mm -hmm. So I might find that if it was now, um, and I was studying with, in Theo's group with these robots, I might place them in the exact sort of opposite, which would be this beautiful sort of neoclassical <coughs> garden, and see, and see what happens when you collide two completely different kinds of technologies together. Because I sometimes think that's probably when things get... Yeah, it's that bit, isn't it? There we are. Mm. Yeah. 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 When you collide diff things which are apparently not to do with each other, and obviously it's a, there's a, well, there would be aeroplanes. It's just it's probably been erased out, hasn't it? The okay. So that, that and this is a way um, I used to keep stuff. Try to just have a bit of paper with a, a standard thing on, and if there's something that interested me, um, I would just stick it in, not knowing quite why. Because you're never too sure why are you? I'm sure. I'm sure you. Uh, uh, it must be the same. Yeah. See, this was just something to do with how to park a, 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 a bus with a trailer or something. I just thought it was really nice, strange drawing with arrows and things. Mm. We've looked at that, haven't we? I share this thing. This is, uh, I think, my fourth year in New Jersey at the New Jersey Institute of Technology when I actually kept sketchbooks and uh, did little silk screeny things like Andy Warhol, but I realized that I called my year a maladjusted reality, which I think is kind of funny. I used to, <laughs> yeah, I used to write stuff and uh, I guess draw stuff. But yeah, those things are somehow fleeting. But I remember working on, on this kind of things. These were like, yeah, the way that I did stuff. It's kind of embarrassing to show this to my students. <laughs> yeah. How many of you d draw by hand anymore? Mm -hmm. You all draw by hand? Yeah. Because it can be quite fast, can't it? Yeah. Would it take you very long to do something like this? No, that was just like basically living in a ghetto and I just 
instead of sleeping and being human. <laughs> and that kind of work has become more like this kind of stuff. Robots. And things that, the first kind of things that I huh? started writing. Which is, uh, this is stuff when me and my brother, sir, I handle this. This is stuff that me and my brother used to do when we were in London together, which is um, my DRL paper was basically revisiting Collage City. So I thought that if I took every reference that Colin Rowe and Fred Coder had mm. out, that maybe Collage City was still useful. And then my brother did that to the history of graphic design. He took this history book of graphic design and we literally cut out every reference of every graphic design thing just as a kind of action to be able to speak to. We should you put it together in different ways, you mean, like exquisite corpse, is that the well, idea? That, 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 that's your job now. <laughs> oh, I, I think it, yeah, but that, would the, you, you wouldn't know it was a very famous ex tutor, the A called Robin Evans, who wrote, wrote, wrote a lot about drawing. And I was at his, um, a final diploma presentation, and he did exactly that. He put a, a big sheet out with a, with a grid on uh, road and stuff, uh, and then he had a bag full of windows and doors and columns and walls, and he just <laughs> emptied it onto the table. He said, "You are you did it." Yeah. And he passed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could try it. Yeah. yeah. exhibition that, that I curated here was What Planet Are They On? Uh, AA's DRL is 10 years old, has changed the language of architecture forever. Which is kind of interesting. Some of my colleagues found this very yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah. I thought it was a warning that we had to do different stuff. <laughs> This is when I first went to the United States. One of the things that uh, I really loved was the quality of suburban houses, which um, you know people would buy. So this is a typical company selling um, houses. Yeah, yeah. So when you think of English suburban houses and you think of that, yeah, but are you not, there you are, not, ah, not, he's not a name you hear very much, is he, Lautner? Mm, they amazing, aren't they? But here's your little Lautner you could actually buy. I thought they were wonderful, beautiful. Let's try and have it built. I uh, know often built, of course, in huge, um, huge developments. Interior. Classic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. New learning spaces. This is a letter with a guy named Tom Wiscoe. So Tom tried for a couple of years to um, get us to be considered for the MoMA PS1. And uh, yeah, he failed twice. But he tried hard. And uh, yeah, they decided to plant vegetables that year. But uh, yeah, that's when he had an office called Immersion. That was then a front. Um, this is Oren Katz, who's an interesting artist. He's doing a lot of bio art. He's a very good friend of Stellar, since everybody likes Stellar. Mm -hmm. It's a rat with a hair on it, yes, on the body. But why is it so weird? It was not touch for Ah, I see that. But it has an ear. It's still like a ear on his hands. In peace. So you can combine it with two? Yeah. He's awesome. And also like this generation. So, Arthur Quambri did this really interesting book called Plastics and Architecture, which 
is also he's in the DVD with David. I think this is what uh, um, Dan, Dennis Crompton, who runs the archive, he's, he's printed off for me lots of stuff that he's got. But, yeah, this is kind of. Uh, <coughs> I did this twice, once the, as I was to do a Christmas lecture at Westminster and I was really ambitious and the person was helping me, I was going to have film, you know, slides, everything, yeah, and the person was helping me, suddenly decided not to and I was stuck the day before because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And there I was in this lecture theatre, with not everybody waiting, and all the equipment went wrong. The technician, it was Christmas time, so he was in the pub. <laughs> so, as a last resort, I asked everybody to hold up their mobile phones and wave them, and I took some photographs, and that was part of it. And then I did it again in first year, where I've actually got the move, a movie of it with... Um, <laughs> Valentin telling everybody what to do, <laughs> telling them to shut up. It was quite funny. Oh, yeah. Ooh, there's a hero. We all read your McLuhan. Yes, sir. Yeah? So oh, bad. bad. So well, I can well forgive him. Yeah. Reflections on and by. I haven't read, seen this book. Yeah, the. Uh, Fun? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, the medium is a mass or just a little book. 
that's that's the one. Beautiful one. Yeah, that's the one you should start with if you can get hold of it from anywhere. It's very hard to find. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a massage. There was a typo. Yeah. <laughs> he loved it because yeah. the mass age. With, with, he made it with Quentin Field, yeah. didn't he? Who was an anthropologist whose main work was with uh, the indigenous tribes in the Arctic, in northern Canada, where he was doing research into the, the effect of, of the potential effect of uh, television and modern communications on, on, the, on these kind of societies. It's almost prophetic. Like, yes. Kind of global village and yeah. Housing. Well, I think there was a gener part of a generation like me who um, thought the phrase global village was really exciting. Oh, oh, God. But then you forget what a village is like, and it's full of backbiting, gossip, uh, inward-looking, inward and that's exactly what we're living in, isn't it? In, the country's getting more and more inward-looking, fake news, which is just like gossip, really. Oh, he said that. No, he didn't. No, she did that to him. You know. mm. Yeah, so you can see so an old um, mail order catalogue. No, nothing's much changed, has it? A uh, pretty girl lounging with a nice coffee pot. Pardon? Buy irons today. Uh, yeah. Lots of irons. Lots of irons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at those pans. Wow. 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 How did it get so ugly? Like, irons was, were pretty cool. <laughs> I never <laughs> see any pots and pans <laughs> at the AA and the, when students design. Oh, you don't see pots and pans. <laughs> or, yes, or, or chickens. Yes. <laughs> Yes. But of course, this is all on the. Uh, the reason I, I collect these is because I presume sooner or later they're, they're just not going to be redundant because you, you'll buy everything on the internet. But Argos still produce catalogue, don't they? Yeah. Mm. No, now they're normally they're normally targeted, aren't they? They've got your number somewhere. Like when you get older, you're you're such a target for walking paths. <laughs> you know, clothes that don't have many buttons. Oh, it's horrible. It's so depressing. Yeah. Mm. We should talk about Argo Pound. Pardon? Why, why did it even exist? Argo Pound? Yeah. yeah, why? Some, <laughs> many people wish it hadn't, I think. Oh, I yeah. Well, uh, uh, it, it's... Well, I, c I can't. I, I imagine... I mean, you have to, first of all, there was no means then of, uh, of, of getting this published, of, of, of work like that. Nobody did it. The first archigram um, was reviewed by, the, by AJ, and, and they said it was complete rubbish, and we should go away and read Descartes, who would teach us how to think properly. So thanks a lot, AJ. But what it was, <laughs> you found... I was uh, I'd been fired from my job in Nottingham, so I came to London, and it was very. I'll, I'll just bore you for a short period of time. Um, work was very different then. If if you were at actual desk at 9:30 in the morning and you were still there at 5:30, they were really happy. You know, <laughs> really. Oh, oh, you're still, you're still here, here David. Because <laughs> <laughs> they know you knew you could just go next door. And just walk into a job. Jobs would. It was a time of very big sort of expansion. And so I, I just found myself in an office with another suburban boy, Peter Cook, but he he'd been to the AA, and also a man called Arnold Linden, who I, I keep bumping into. He's the same, about same same age as me, and 
he was just back from America. He had worked, been working for two years for SOM. Can you imagine You're sitting next to this man who worked for Skidmore, Rhines and Merrill for two years? No, fantastic. And uh, so, uh, and then uh, Peter and I got talking, and, and he'd done a thesis that no one would publish, and I'd done the mosque, which no one would publish. And then you sort of bump into other young architects who, who thought they were, you know, brilliant. Yeah, we're so effing brilliant, you know, go away, you know, boring old <laughs> modernists like Peter Smithson. They, I mean, they, uh, Peter Smithson must have hated us because we used to come to the AA and tell him this, you know, go, on, go away, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, we're uh, really arrogant. So you, the only thing to do was to make your own magazine. And it wasn't a magazine. It was intended as a sort of an annoying pamphlet uh, that we could distribute, and it was really cheap. Now, this was a later one when it got more. It was originally just two sheets, the first diagram. I could bring one in. Well, where, did, where did you distribute it? How did it go? Schools of Architecture, mainly. Yeah. 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 Yes. And then it got a, it got a sort of reputation um, for. Uh, and we, w we would arrange things um, like. There's something I did. There's, I had a, I don't know where it's gone. It w I had a, a workshop in Nottingham, so we did sort of arrange things with other, other students. Because there was a sort of um, a, an appetite for change then, um, um, and to work with other people that you'd never met. Uh, and then. So after the first one, then, we, then more students said, oh, this is my thesis, and my tutor said it was rubbish, you know, by the, oh, you stupid tutor. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't take any notice. That's a one lesson you should learn. Your, part of your job here is to educate your tutors, to keep them on their toes, you know, not let them slip back into uh, easy ways. Pardon? Really bad students, so. Yes, yeah, doesn't do as he's told, does he? So each archogram was different and, and um, to do with issues. Like the AA now have their summer schools, a lot of them. The original AA summer schools were about issues which Alvin Boyarski would um, uh, propose a sort of issue, as, as say three or four questions, and then invite people to come to the summer school and explore those particular issues. Now I think it's much more tutor-led, isn't it? Your tutor lives in Rome, so you go to Rome and do something in Rome. Whereas before, they, they were very, mainly London-based. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so, there were a lot of very, um, interest, and that became something called Artnet, which Peter Cook ran which he got a grant from McAlpine. Yes, but I've forgotten. There's some, again, some friendship, some yeah. personal connection, yes. Mm. Yeah. And so this one, Archigram 8, it was made in connection with an exhibition at the Milan Triennale called The Greater Number. And so it was... This was done as a, quite a series of separate sheets. This was by somebody called Barry Snow from different all, all trying to deal with this question of the, the greater number and inventing phrases like the pack. So you had popular packs. So, oh yeah, you have a village pack for the church. They're a little pack, they are. <laughs> so, and that seems silly, but you were ex and I think you, all your students, you have um, the space to push your ideas to their extreme, you know. And I'm sure that, uh, that are you all in the DRL or something? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, tutors will vary. Some tutors will have very strong ideas, and others will, allow, will encourage you to um, push your ideas as far as they will go. And so also, our archigram developed very, very kind of noisy graphic techniques because they, wa they wanted it to be more like um, 
um, advertised in a kind of uh, collision of the senses, so it's visually arresting, um, you know, lots of text covering drawings, so that you can't, it, it, it was supposed to be sort of more McLuhan-esque, I mean, he, hmm, yeah, because, um, uh, the, the word environment, Merton McLuhan explains, means to hit all at once. So you're trying to make drawings which are much more well, immersive to modern world. Whether you think that is or not, I, I don't know. It might be if it was much bigger, but but it was quite quite attention grabbing in its time and despised by ma many. Really? Most. Well, why did people despise it? I, I just thought we stupid winkers, basically. <laughs> <laughs> probably do right. But whereas, say, uh, Alcogram 9, which was the last, um, was when a number of us in Alcogram were beginning to shift away from the, the sort of what, the sort of early stuff, which which produced drawings much more like like that. This was the very first plug-in project that Alcogram ever did. And I'm sure a uh, metabolist may have done one at the same time too sort of technically driven project to something where I begin to start getting much more interested in the potential of the, the landscape as being architecture, you know, as, as the, those pictures from Princess, the Prince of Wales' house, it is sort of architecture in a way. And this is another one to do with change. The, the, you see, I think, for me, uh, that was selfish, wasn't it? This is architecture. <laughs> you, get it. you have to agree with me. Very nice composition. That word, Ed, Ed is an artist, so you can laugh at what I'm going to say. There was an American artist called Les Levine, wasn't there? Who, he had a restaurant. Yeah. And when if he had a meal there, he would sign the menu, so, <laughs> and he and he famously said, "It is art if I say it is." So, so and if, I'm an artist, so if I say that it's is art, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sign it, it has Good. to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Will's first plug-in city drawing by Harvey Brown. Yeah, you wouldn't get that past your diploma table now. Uh, look at these things underneath. It was for Nottingham, there was a competition uh, uh, by someone called Paul Ritter, who um, was, he was actually one of my tutors. Who, uh, he told me I was mentally retarded. It was nice coming from a tutor. I think he might have been right. And then retrospect, <gasps> he's a, he used to have have two tours in his house, and he had a he um, he didn't believe in disciplining his children, uh, and one of the children got very ill because um, it used to eat coal, and then it was hospitalised, and he wouldn't say don't eat coal. He'd say well he's got to find out. It's not nice to eat, and this kid used to come hit me with his tennis racket, and. Um, what <laughs> Paul Rister would say, he said, I don't mind you hitting David, but would you like to explain why you want to do it? And he would say, I don't like him. You know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, architecture. When, when was that compared to the... Oh, this is long. No, the... Right. Yeah, the Fun Palace and the... The Pompidou uh, Centre. Be before the Fun Palace, yes. Right. Oh, a long time before the Pompidou Centre. Yes. Mm, yeah, probably 19, 1959, something like that. Mm. Yeah.